Well, welcome back everybody. So we have covered saw milling. We've covered cutting timbers. We've covered cutting joinery. We've covered so much stuff when it has to do with timber framing. But we never really got into too much selecting good timbers when you're out in the woods before you even cut a tree down. If you were lucky enough as I was to be able to find a place to where you could cut your own trees, choose your trees, so much nicer. If you're relying on a logger to bring you what they think you need, doesn't always work out. I bought my first two loads of logs for this building, spent a lot of money on them. I had a lot of logs that were just plain useless for what I was doing. That's not the logger's fault. A lot of people really aren't that experienced with cutting timbers for timber framing. So we're going to go through today right out in the woods and we're just going to cover a couple of the different species and what their pros are, what their cons are if you're selecting timber. My species of choice is obviously white pine, which we have a good one right here. Now this is uh, this is one of those trees that's absolutely perfect for this kind of thing. It is straight. I mean, it's telephone pole straight. I don't have any big branches on it. We have some small sucker branches on there. Looks like the biggest ones, maybe an inch and a quarter diameter going up this trunk as far as I can see. We look like we have probably 35, almost 40 feet of clear span trunk, straight as an arrow all the way up. This is the kind of tree you want all the way. So when you're coming up to one of these trees and you're trying to decide what you, what you want to use, always carry an axe with you. Not a bad idea to kind of give that trunk a good wrap, see if you have a hollow log. Another thing I carry with me when I'm coming out to the woods just to select timbers, I like to go to the woods to look at what I'm going to cut before, long before I ever cut it down so I can kind of get a game plan. Um, I don't know, it's just an organization thing for me and you guys know I'm not always that organized, but I like to carry a good logger's tape with me. This is, a, uh, this is the original logger's tape, made by U.S. Tape Company, Pennsburg, Pennsylvania. So on this tape, you obviously have your inches and feet on one side. Then you have a diameter tape on the back side. You wrap this around the tree. Now you're going to measure it. Don't measure it down here at the bottom where you have the root swell, the butt swell, because it's going to throw it off. So say you're looking to get uh, an 8x8 eight eight timber, that log has to have a diagonal measurement of at least 11 and a half inches on the narrowest end. Now, trees as they grow, they have taper, so you always have to be aware of that. So I want this quite a bit bigger on the bottom. I want this diameter quite a bit bigger. So you do, if you're lucky enough to be able to get your arms around it. I like to go close to chest height. Try to get it straight around the tree. So we're looking at an 18, 18.7 inch diameter on this log down here. So probably by the time we get a good 20 feet up, we're probably going to be that 11 and a half inches. So we'll be right on the cusp. So that's something that's good to know. Now if you're not sure, a good trick to use if you're not sure what your diagonal measurement's going to be, just draw it out on something. If you know you need an 8 by 8 timber, draw an 8 inch by 8 inch square, measure the diagonal. That'll tell you the minimum, the diameter of that log has to be on the narrow end. Something else to keep in mind if you're planning that way, look at that tree really well. Walk all the way around it. Get an idea if you got a big crown and a big bow, big curve, something like that. Look for the imperfections. Now you're looking to avoid big leader branches closer to the ground because that's going to give you an unstable timber. You're looking for straight grain trees. White pine's a good straight grain tree. The nice thing about white pine why a lot of people like it so much, myself included. White pine does not shrink a whole lot in the timbers. It has a very low moisture content compared to a lot of other trees. Hemlock has a very high moisture content. Your white oaks have a lot of high moisture content. So they're going to shrink more. They're going to twist more. They're going to check more, things like that. That's not a deal breaker. There's nothing more beautiful than a nice white oak frame. Just beautiful. I mean, uh, I'd like to build one myself. But um, as far as stability, I really like the white pine. Of course, if you're using white pine, your timbers end up having to be a little bit bigger than they would, say, if it was hemlock or white oak, the two other really big woods of choice. 
If you have access to Douglas fir, by all means I would pick it over any of them. Douglas fir is the most stable species of tree in North America. White pine is number two. So let's move along. Um, I'm going to try to get you guys some shots higher up. But with the sun hitting the canopy of the trees here, it's kind of washing out. So you're not really going to be able to see it. So I'm going to try to find an example of one that we don't want. And hopefully I could get a view of it up a little bit higher. So anyway, let's keep moving along. Now there's an example of one right there that I probably wouldn't bother cutting. So that crotch right there is probably about 12 feet off the ground. So the way that thing's growing, probably quite a ways down that trunk, you can kind of see... It's kind of hard with how bright the backdrop is there, but you can kind of see kind of a crack down right the center of that crotch. There's probably a good size bark inclusion on that end. If that was a hardwood, that'd be beautiful for some tables or something like that, but we are looking for timber framing stuff. And if you look down the trunk, you see it takes a pretty good bow right there. So to me, that's a timber that I really don't want to use because again, you're looking you're looking for the straightest and purest timbers you can. End of the day, you're looking for at least a grade two timber, which means you have very small knots, not a lot of them. If you can find grade one or close to clear, so much the better, but that's pretty hard to find these days. Let's keep moving along. That's another white pine right there. Here's a good example of a species that I wouldn't use for timber framing. This is a shagbark hickory. Good telltale stein here. You have the bark on the outside. It's shaggy. comes off, hence the name. The nuts on this tree are delicious if you have the patience to sit there and crack all those shells. They're very hard. They don't like to give it up. But anyway, this is a species I would kind of avoid if I was building this out of a timber frame. I mean, if it's all you had, you got to go with what you have. But there are a lot of issues with using something like shagbark hickory. For one, the pests love it. Bugs love to eat hickory. You ever cut enough of these down and you get big nest of carpenter ants in them, bugs are not afraid of this lumber in one, <laughs> no way, shape, or form. Not to say that white pine is the most insect resistant wood, but it's a lot better than this stuff here. Now this is a good straight grain wood very straight grain. Even when it grows like this, this thing's about tipping over. A lot of that's because it's starting to uproot. We get a lot of high winds up here and uh, tops get heavy. These woods right here, it's a lot of ledge rock underneath it, so the soil's not all that deep. So once the root structure gets to a certain size, the treetop gets to a certain size, they end up coming down. That's why you don't see a lot of monster trees in these woods. I mean, these, these woods here, I don't think they've been logged off in anybody around here's memory. These are the woods that you could see from my backyard um, when we're filming out there, just, just so you know where I am. But anyway, this isn't worth a damn as timbers, but it makes pretty good pegs, good strong pegs. Make sure it's good and dry though before you uh, use them as pegs just so they don't shrink up in there. But that's an example of one you don't want to use, so let's keep going. Here's a really good example of one that I would never use to build a timber frame with. Not to say I wouldn't use it to make some tables and stuff like that, because that's a, <laughs> that's a big old hard maple right there, big old sugar maple. So why wouldn't you use something like this? When you're looking for timbers for timber framing, we've said it in a lot of the build videos. If you guys are new here and you haven't seen those, there's like 180 some in a playlist of the timber framing blog to where we built our timber frame of information in there. So there's my little plug for the channel. But anyway, we covered a lot that you want to box the heartwood. So that means if you're trying to box the heartwood, you're getting that heartwood directly centered inside your timber to yield you the most stable timber that you can get. 
So what happens if it starts to check on the outside, if your heartwood's boxed, a lot of times that check is not going to continue all the way through to the other side of the timber. And that's very important for the structural stability of your timber frame. A tree like this, I'm sure you could cut it into timbers. Maple's not terrible for timber framing. I would probably never use it if I, only if it was a last resort. It's very hard to work with, things like that. But uh, trees this big, a lot of times you go to take them down and there's a lot of stuff inside them that you don't want. Tree gets to this size, a lot of times you get a lot of hollow spots in it. It's almost inevitable. But um, you're wasting a whole lot of lumber off of one of these, especially say, say you're doing the, uh, so you don't want to make siding, things like that out of this. You could always cut the rest of it up for woodworking stuff, but we're talking about timber framing. It's pure and simple. You get a tree this big, now unless you can get your timbers totally free of heartwood, so that's what you either want totally free or you want to box that heartwood. But a tree like this to me is just a lot of waste, plus you have to try to handle this thing to get it down to a 10 by 10, an 8 by 8, something like that. It's a lot of handling for a little bit of uh, a lot of handling. Of course, you know, there's a lot of burls and stuff in this tree. Uh, yeah, this one's nice. Real nice. I just sit here and drool a little bit over these burls. Alright, moving along. Alright, so, so going out to the woods picking your own timbers isn't really all that hard. It's not all that difficult. After a little while of doing it, you start to develop an eye for what you're looking for. You can start to see the imperfections in some of the trees before you even cut them down. That's why I much prefer to be able to go out in the woods and pick the trees that I want to use myself. Then I'm not relying on somebody else. Not, not all of us have that option. But I've noticed, reading the comments the last couple of years, a lot of people looking to get into timber framing, a lot of them do have timber at their disposal, which is kind of cool, helps a lot. If you don't have timber at your disposal and you need to go get it from a sawmill, it's very important that you specify very clearly what you need those timbers to be from your sawmill. Whether you're going to Amish, whether you're going to a small family sawmill, does not matter. If you have to, you draw a diagram for them because it's so important for you to get the structural stability that you need out of that frame. you got to remember that frame, the whole basis of a timber frame is that skeleton just like your body skeleton, it supports everything. You're not relying on sheathing. You're not relying on any of that stuff for strapping. You're not relying on any of that for structural stability. You are relying strictly on the frame itself. Now, if you're going to use sheet goods and stuff within the frame, yes, that is going to add some structural value to it, but you're not relying on it. You do not design a timber frame with the idea that you're going to use plywood to help hold it together. A stick built house, if you took the plywood off of it, it wouldn't last very long, I'll tell you that. But so it's just very important. But, um, you know, look for trees that are growing in the middle of the woods if you're able to be lucky enough to pick your own. That's important because they're not going to have the stresses on them that trees on the edges or sitting out in the middle of fields have. We've talked about that many times before in the past. So there's a lot of stuff. You know, it's easy stuff, it's simple stuff, but this is probably one of the more, probably the second or third most asked question on this channel is picking about picking timbers and species and things like that. So if you're looking and you have, so say you have the, uh, say you have multiple species at your disposal, I will probably always pick white pine if it's my first choice and I have it at my disposal. From white pine, I would go to white oak. White oak's a beautiful wood for timber framing. From there, I would probably go to hemlock, and then maybe to beech. And spruce, I'd stay away from. I don't care for spruce. It has a lot of movement on it, prone to a lot of big checking, things like that. Um, people say you can't really use cottonwood. I've seen a few frames built out of cottonwood, and they're just fine. Cottonwood has close to the same engineering properties as white pine. It's just not as stable. The bugs really like it. Red pine, I would avoid red pine unless that's all you have. I mean, it. a lot of times, end of the day, it comes down to what timber you have at your disposal, what you have available to you, and you shouldn't let, uh, you shouldn't let species selection keep you from building something you really want to build. You just find ways to work with it. You just engineer the sizes right, you will find a way to work with it. So, 
Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walk in the woods today. It's been a nice break for me to get off the tractor and come out here, try to do something kind of related to the theme of the channel. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.